In Joshua chapter 7, we learn that there were some setbacks because of some sin that had entered into the camp of Israel. They had to deal with the sin. They had to remove this sin from the camp. Great picture for us of how there's things in our life that we need to remove from our home and from our family because if we don't remove it, it will keep us from what God has for us in the future. So now the children of Israel are going back to Ai. They're going back to battle. They're going to defeat this town, and God is going to help them do it. Let's learn from the word, chapter 8. Verse one, then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Interesting, he jumps back to what he had said in chapter one when Joshua first came into leadership. He told him, you know, you don't need to be afraid, you don't need to be discouraged, you need to be strong and courageous. He said, Joshua, I know that there was a setback. This is your first setback, if you will, in your time leading the people, the first battle that you lost. Joshua, this battle does not define you. There's some times where you and I are gonna lose. There's some times where we have setbacks in our life. There's some times where we make mistakes, where we mess up. Don't allow that to define you. Allow the grace of the cross of Jesus Christ to define you and God will lead you moving forward. He said, take the whole army up with you and go up and attack AI. I love what God says. God says, don't you take two, 3,000 soldiers. He says, you take the whole army up. He says, you take every, watch this principle. You take every resource at your disposal. Sometimes in my life, you know, if there's a decision that I need to make, I can foolishly think, ah, you know what, I don't need to pray about it. I'll just, I'll just make a decision, or uh, you know what, or I've prayed about it, and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to worship. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily need to read my Bible or maybe see what my Bible says. You know, I just prayed about it. I told God what I was feeling. I'm good. No, God says, take everything at your disposal. We need to live a life of worship, a life of prayer, a life of reading our Word and being close to God. Use the full armor of God. Ephesians chapter six talks about being equipped with everything that you need to take your stand. For I have delivered in your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that this time you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. He said, this time I'm going to allow you to keep what's in the city. Verse 3. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you be on the alert. And I and all those with me will advance on the city. When the men come out before us and against us as they did before, we will flee from them. So just like last time, we're gonna go out, we're gonna start the battle, and then we're gonna run like we're losing. Last time they really were losing, but this time we're gonna fake it. It's kind of like a trap. It's They're setting them up. It's an ambush. He says, you guys wait behind the city. When we draw them out, you go into the city and then we'll defeat them on two fronts. It was like a two front war, if you will. It says, verse six, they will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city for they will say they are running away from us as they did before. So when we flee from them, you're to rise up from the ambush and take the city. The Lord, your God will give it into your hand. You're not gonna take it. God's gonna give it to you. When you have taken the city, set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it, you have my orders. Verse nine, then Joshua sent them off and they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent the night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered his army, the entire army, and he and the leaders of Israel marched before them to Ai. The entire force that was with him marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up camp north of Ai with the valley between them and the city. Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai to the west of the city. So the soldiers took up their positions with the main camp to the north of the city and to the ambush to the west of the city. That night, Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at a certain place overlooking the Arabah. But he did not know that an ambush had been set against him behind the city. Joshua and all the Israelites let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled toward the wilderness. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were lured away from the city. Not a man remained in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold out toward Ai the javelin that is in your hand, for into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out toward the city the javelin that was in his hand. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set it on fire. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising up in the sky, but they had no chance to escape in any direction, for the Israelites had surrounded them. They, for when Joshua and Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that the smoke was going up from it, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. Those in the ambush also came out of the city against them, so they were caught in the middle. They were completely surrounded. They had nowhere to go. 
With Israelites on both sides, Israel cut them down, leaving them neither survivors nor fugitives. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. So they killed everyone. They left none alive, just as God commanded. The king was brought before Joshua. When Israel had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the wilderness where they had chased them, and when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed all those who were in the city. Twelve thousand men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back the hand that held out his javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and the plunder of the city as the Lord had instructed Joshua. So just as God had told them, he delivered the city into their hand. They killed all the inhabitants, 12,000 people. They used the entire army to do it. They did not leave anyone alive, and they took all the plunder. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. And he impaled the body of the king of Ai on a pole and left it there until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered them to take the body from the pole and throw it down at the entrance of the city gate, and they raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains to this day. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord and the God of Israel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites. He built it according to what was written in the book of the Law of Moses. What we learned about, you know, in Exodus and those earlier books of the Bible, how to specifically do things, how to specifically set things up. Joshua was very careful, very intentional to follow that, similar to how God had instructed Joshua in chapter 1 to specifically follow the words of God. It says that on it they offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on stones a copy of the law of Moses. All the Israelites with their elders, officials, and judges were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, facing the Levitical priests who carried it. Both the foreigners living among them and the native-born were there. Half of the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had formally commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it is written in the book of the law. There is not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and the children and the foreigners who lived among them. It said all of it, the blessings and the curses. He read it all to them. You say, why does that matter? Paul, the apostle Paul would say something powerful in the New Testament. He said, we did not withhold from you the full counsel of God. And sometimes, and I just want to always be honest and tell it like it is, sometimes it's easier for me to tell you all the good things. It's really easy for me to get here and talk about the blessings of the scripture and all the promises of God. Now the promises of God are yes and amen and all that God desires to do for you. And you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, the plans and the hopes that he has for you, the future, plans for good and not for evil and all these great things that God wants to do for you. But I need you to understand that yes, God has plans for good and not for evil, but you don't have to follow his plan. And basically what the Bible is saying is Joshua didn't withhold from the people the full counsel. He said, look, I'm going to tell you the good, but I'm also going to tell you the bad that comes if you don't follow the good and perfect and pleasing will of God. And it's something really important for us to learn the intentionality of diving into God's word and learning what God would say to us and teach us as individuals, as families, because there's a lot in the scripture that we need to know and we need to be diligent to learn it because really it's the manual to life. And as we've learned before, Jesus Christ is the model. And so I just want to take a moment and thank you for being diligent to learn your Bible, to learn the stories, and to grow in your walk with God. And I know that as you take it and you apply it to your life, just as God talked to Joshua and he told him, you're going to be successful. You're going to prosper. You do things my way. My hand will be on you and you will be blessed. Be blessed today.